Determination of the Universal Gas Law Constant In this experiment, you will be determining the ideal gas law constant, R, by applying the ideal gas law, PV equals to NRT, to a reaction between HCl and magnesium. P here refers to the pressure of the gas, V is the volume, N is the number of moles of gas, and T is the temperature in Kelvin. Begin by practicing inverting a burette full of distilled water into a beaker. Note that this experiment should be done inside the fume hood. In this video, it is done outside the fume hood for demonstration purposes only. First, securely clamp the burette into place using a butterfly clamp. Before the experiment, stretch and wrap a piece of parafilm on the tip of the burette to ensure that your burette is airtight. Then, fill the burette with distilled water using a funnel. Mark the liquid level with a piece of tape. Obtain a 1 liter beaker and fill it about halfway with distilled water. Ensure that you have enough room to invert the burette without hitting anything and that you are wearing gloves. Then, cover the top of the burette with your finger and carefully invert it into the beaker of water. The top of the burette must be fully covered to prevent liquid from dripping out during the inversion. You may want to try using your thumb or index finger for this. Use your other hand to clamp the burette into place. Adjust the burette such that it is just up off the bottom of the beaker. Take note of the level of the water in the inverted burette. It should be between 46 and 48 mils. You may need to practice a few times to determine the right volume of liquid needed to achieve this. Practice reading the burette volume upside down as well. All readings should be made to two decimal places. For this experiment, you will need to cut out a piece of magnesium ribbon of the appropriate length as determined by your pre-lab calculations. Sand the ribbon gently to get rid of the oxidized layer. Once all the outer coating is sanded off, cut the ribbon to the desired length. Accurately weigh the ribbon using an analytical balance. Zero the balance with the weighing bottle. Then, add the ribbon to the bottle and record the mass to four decimal places. Ensure that the doors of the balance are closed before each reading. Once the ribbon is weighed, do not touch it with your bare hands. Use a copper wire to secure the ribbon to the burette. Wrap the wire around the top of the burette and secure the ribbon on the other end. Try to keep the ribbon fairly open in order to expose as much surface area as possible. Once wrapped, there should be about 6 cm of wire between the burette and the ribbon to allow for proper insertion of the ribbon. Next, pour 12 ml of 3 molar HCl into the burette. Remember to wear gloves when working with HCl. Wash down the acid from the walls of the burette with distilled water and fill the remaining burette with water up to the level previously marked with tape. Insert the ribbon into the burette so that it sits a few centimeters inside. Carefully cover and invert the burette into a beaker of water and immediately record the initial burette reading. The reaction is indicated by bubbling seen around the magnesium ribbon. During the reaction, measure the temperature of water every 2 minutes and take the average of these readings. Also remember to record the barometric pressure provided by your TA. At the end of the reaction, all of the magnesium should be used up and the bubbling will cease. If possible, adjust the amount of water in the beaker to match the volume left in the burette. Otherwise, use a ruler to measure the distance from the surface of the water in the beaker to the level in the burette in millimeters. Record the final burette volume and repeat the experiment three more times. It is recommended that you set up the second reaction while waiting for the first one to cease. If the trial is unsuccessful, it will need to be repeated again. Here are a few examples of unsuccessful trials that you should avoid. Following the inversion of the burette, the level of the liquid in the burette must be within the graduated portion, otherwise it is impossible to accurately measure the initial volume as there are no markings above the 50 ml mark. If unreacted magnesium sinks to the bottom of the burette, it may remain unreacted or the gas produced from the reaction may escape the burette, causing your results to be inaccurate. 
If the ribbon is not inserted deep enough into the burette before inversion, some of the hydrogen gas may escape outside of the burette from the bottom, making the volume readings inaccurate. If some of the magnesium attached to the copper wire remains unreacted at the end of the reaction, it is an indication that the oxidized layer of the ribbon was not completely sanded off.